morning, y'all. How are y'all doing today? I'm blessed and highly favored. I think today's vlog is going to be a things that irritate flight attendants because one, if somebody else asks me for some snacks when I have a full tray of drinks in my hand, how do you want me to pass out snacks and drinks all at one time? Let's have a little bit of patience here, people. I only got two hands. I need one to hold a tray, one to hand you your drink. There's no room for snacks. Another thing that irritates flight attendants, if I'm here with their snack basket and I'm on the other side of the road, don't grab up my basket if my bag is turned. And then don't ask me for 10,000 more snacks. Like you didn't just steal five. Do you have anything to add, Nicole? Kind of. <laughs> so another piece, when we're coming through the aisle, we make the announcement, we're about to start our beverage and snack service. Please take a look at your um, menu card in your seat back pocket. Have your selections ready for us. You get to their seat. Can I offer you a beverage? What do you have? I'm not going to sit there and list everything out for you. I'm sorry. I'm just not doing it. Here's a menu in your seat back pocket. So annoying. Just, I mean, what do you want to drink? What will quench your thirst right now? Ay, 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 ay. So I'm going to make today all about pet peeves. One really good thing about being a flight attendant is that on your downtime, you can do a lot of things, like upload a vlog. It's time to upload the vlog that I did not upload last night, y'all. And then y'all will have this vlog tonight. I'm getting back on track. Another peeve, y'all. Well, it's not really a peeve. It's just nasty. Don't walk around the aircraft barefoot. Put some shoes on. These floors are dirty. Back here in McGalley, the floor is dirty, and you just walking around barefoot like this your house. And then get your feet off the back of my seat. Thank you. <laughs> this is my cousin, guys. How'd your batch? Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> Let me this guy. So I'm in Fort Lauderdale on a layover. This is my cousin, like cousin, cousin. Real cousin. And, real cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and he just told me he's coming to in flight. I'm so excited. That means I'm going to go pin him oh. when he graduates. Yep. <laughs> So y'all look out for that in a few months. Months. Bye. Barbados, here we come. Barbados, here we come. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of pet peeves for y'all while I'm on this flight. But, are they in provision? We, do we don't have anything? We need, I, that's it? Are you going to call her? <sighs> Provisioning, y'all. That is when... The people, which one these lights are blinking? None of them are blinking, it needs to be reset. Uh, this one's blinking. Um, that's when catering comes in. No TV, and no movies, and we haven't been filmed yet either. So, just, you know, we're gonna board. Okay, that's the last one. <laughs> Y'all heard that? <laughs> no TVs, no movies, we ain't got no gas, we ain't been provisioned. This flight is not starting off well, um, but what's not going to happen is we're not leaving this place without these TVs working because that is the only thing that keeps people calm, cool, and collected. Give them some headphones, let them purchase some headphones, turn on the TV, the music, whatever, and do what you do. And leave me alone. This is a three and a half hour flight. I don't want to be bothered all three and a half hours. And if they ain't got nothing else to do, they're going to bother the flight attendant. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Super dark out here, but we have finally arrived after the craziest of craziest flights. Like, I couldn't even keep up with all the pet peeves, y'all. But it's late. It's almost 8 p.m. Our shuttle leaves at 6 a.m. That's okay. We're going to make the most of this little layover. Okay, y'all, quick room tour. Room. <laughs> Told y'all it was going to be quick. This is it. Bed with no sh no comforter. I guess I'm not gonna be cold. Restroom. Nice little stand up shower. Me, me. And we are in Barbados, y'all. Mm, I wish. It I truly wish it wasn't so late. So, cause the oh my god, we just walked by the pool. The pool looks so pretty. The beach was so pretty but it's dark out and I don't have the energy for that so we're gonna go meet downstairs they give us a free rum punch when we get here so I'm about to go rum punch it up and then walk right across the street and there's some restaurants and things to eat 
And that's gonna be it. I'll just have to finagle my way back here again for like a 24 hour layover so I can really enjoy, but this is, an, this is nice. This is nice. I've never been to Barbados, so at least now I can say check. All right. We are literally right across the street. That's our hotel. We're right here. <laughs> Trying to get some food. That's my crew, Nicole and Wendy. Let me have grilled potatoes on the side and rice, and then a side of grilled shrimp. Or which is how much in the U.S.? <laughs> shrimp and fish. Because that's when they have the little special names. And I'm not gonna get in. Our flight's too early. We can't do anything. But we can walk around and act like we can enjoy it. Is that the beach right there? Oh, I want to go. It's so dark out here, though. We're so close to the beach, and I can't enjoy. Sorry, y'all can't see me. Nothing I can do about the lighting out here. But do y'all hear the ocean? Yeah, y'all can't see me on the water. It's okay. But we really only have like three or four hours to kind of enjoy the city. Because then we have to go to bed and get enough rest. So, bittersweet. But I'll definitely be back. This hotel is really freaking nice. I can't tell y'all the name of it. Um, security reasons and things like that. But it's really, really nice. The beach is beautiful. The pool is beautiful. The rooms are okay. They're not that hot, but hey. Makes up for a great day of things that annoy flight attendants. But we just came up with another pet peeve. What is it, Wendy? Okay. This pet peeve is, do you have pampers or huggies? My baby doesn't have any more diapers. And we're going on a five hour transcon flight to New York and you don't have any diapers. I've never you. had this one, but how do you not come prepared so, for your baby? Because I'm a gamma and I love the babies. <laughs> I went on a plane and I hustled diapers for this lady's baby. <laughs> <laughs> She hustled I the hustled diapers. Everybody would have been, do you have an extra pamphlet? I said, damn shame. <laughs> oh, but I don't think I told y'all the one about the bare feet. That's what Nicole was talking about. Bare feet on the plane. Don't That's let nasty. Me see your toes. That's nasty. I have to tell a guy tonight. I said, why are you walking around your socks? I said, don't walk back in your socks. You want to go in the lab with your socks on? <laughs> I said, that's nasty. Don't do that again. Oh, and then what was the Delta lady saying? Oh, about the closing the door. She kept kicking the kicking the lab door closed. You know, that I don't know if it's our doors if they just don't shut when you close them or the people just, but she kept going, oh, that's my pet peeve, kicking the door closed. Yes, I do too. We all do it. She was funny though. She was you know, funny. Pet peeve is when you want to come back and you got six people in your party and you want to make ramen noodles and mix them in the back of the galley. And I'm like, ma'am, go back to your seat. I'm gonna bring you uh, several cups of hot water. Who was asking for that? <laughs> then you put her, her little, Today? No, her little oh. flavor packet in my ice. So when we had those little ice bins, she put her little flavor <laughs> packet in my ice. I was Why? like, ma'am, didn't I tell Why does that need to be cold? Uh, no, she no. It didn't need to be cold. She put the garbage. Oh, she thought the my ice in the ice bed. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I said, Thank God those are gone. Everybody, Everybody used to do that. I said I will bring you twenty cups of hot water, but you cannot make your ramen noodles in my gallery. <laughs> in the kitchen, just like it's her kitchen. <laughs> I'm back in the room, guys. Barbados was fun. I have a really cool crew. This is, I think, one of the first time I've worked with um, people a little more mature than me. I had to think of the right way to say it. I didn't want to call them old because 50 and up isn't old. 
it's just older than I am. But they are so fun and cool and chill. Um, yeah, I've had a really good time with them. We went and ate and just, you know, talked about life and told some cool little family stories. And then we went and sat by the little bar outside by the pool and by the beach and just chit-chatted a little bit more, talked about some of our flight attendant pet peeves. Y'all, we had, I didn't even tell y'all the main thing today that kind of set us all off. This is why it's good being in a crew because y'all can all like, you know, even each other out. So let me see if I can tell y'all this pretty quickly so I can get to bed. We had a customer come on board. It was like a family, a family of, it was about six of them, three adults and about three kids. And one of the, um, one of the kids was special needs. And they were all like sitting in separate rows, separate seats, you know, like in between about four or six different rows. So for special needs um, and, you know, special needs kids, special needs, special needs, whatever, but we're very accommodating. So, but it was a really full flight. And if you check in late, you know, sometimes you just got to get the seats that you get. So the chick gets on board with the rest of her family and she's... She comes up to me, they didn't do this right, they didn't do this right. I told her that I have to sit by a window, I can't be on a plane without sitting by a window. That was my face, y'all, but it looked like this. Like, I get it. Flying can definitely be scary and you wanna be in whatever is your comfort zone. But at this point in time, you're already past the boarding door, you've already passed up the AO, um, Airport operations is what we call them here. Your gate agent, you've already passed that person up. You're getting on the plane. You should have handled that when you was uh, still out there at the gate and they could have changed your seat in the rain. So I tell her, we're definitely gonna get your special needs family member by one of you all. We don't want you all separated. And I'll see if someone is willing to switch their window seat for whatever seat you have. But I can't make any promises. So, but for now, since it is a full flight and we're boarding, remember I told y'all boarding is like the most frustrating part of this job. Just go ahead and take your assigned seats, which are on your boarding pass, and have a seat. And once those per once that person gets to their seat, you know, give me a ding and I'll come and talk to them and let them know the situation and we'll get y'all all figured out. Y'all, this woman, and Lord, I hope she don't follow my vlog because she gonna know I'm talking about her. She was in 20A. <laughs> I cracked myself up. We had a few stragglers getting on pretty late and there were already people before the boarding door was closed asking if they can move seats. And we have our little thing, you know, where we can see if people are sitting there, our manifest, but we have an, uh, it's a manifest on our iPads. I can just scroll and see where people are supposed to be sitting. So I'm telling the people, you know, there's people supposed to be sitting here once we close the boarding doors, if there's nobody there, you know, you're free to move, blah, 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 blah. So one person gets on super, super late. The girl that wants to sit by the window is in the woman's window seat, right? So my F3 comes up to us, hey, you know, I'm not sure where this lady is supposed to sit. I'm asking the girl in the window seat to provide me her boarding pass. She's acting like she don't understand English, is ignoring her. And this is the same, the same chick that I've already talked to when boarding started because they boarded early because the, you know they had special needs so they were able to get on board early. I go back there and we have three minutes to close the doors. And our F1 used to be an AO gate agent, all the same thing. She used to be that. So she understands the importance of the AO position. You know, sometimes as a flight attendant, you don't necessarily understand everything and why the AO or the gate agent is rushing and wanting to do, you know, it's, it's two different jobs. Yes, we're supposed to work as a team, but it's two different jobs. And sometimes we feel like what we have going on on board is more important than that delay that's going to happen. And, you know, and I try to be really understanding to their job, but sometimes it's just hard. It's, it's hard. I'm not AO trained. I've never been AO. Our F1, she has been AO before, so she was a little more accommodating to, to their situation. So she was really, really, really trying to get that boarding door closed. Once the boarding door closed means, you know, you're, you're going to depart on time, kind of, sort of. But yeah, basically, once the door is closed, flight is done, they're taking off on time, right? So we all go back there to the section where old girl ain't sitting in her seat. And she acting like she don't know English because she don't want to respond to any of us because she doesn't want to move, y'all. 
so frustrating. And it was really frustrating for me because I gave you all the nice nice I had in me and I told you I would figure this out for you once the time came. But I'm not just going to let you send somebody else a seat, which they've already paid for and never signed for and might have checked in early enough to get that seat. You know, like, it's not fair to that person just because you can't fly when you not at a window. Girl, bye. Can y'all tell this? She, she had me riled up, y'all. So my F3 is telling my F1, forget closing the boarding door. We need to call AO and they need to come figure this out. You know, F3 has never been AO either. And I'm saying this because a lot of people in our company or at a lot of companies transfer from a gate agent position to a flight attendant position. It happens all the time. So if you're a gate agent or airport operations somewhere and you want to be a flight attendant, it's definitely possible. So F1 is saying, no, 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 no. You know, like, let's just figure it out. Let's just get this lady in the seat, you know, whatever. And I look old girl dead in the face, window girl. I look her 28, you sit in 28. I looked her dead in the face and I said, I told you to sit in your assigned seat. And once, you know, the plane, once we close the boarding doors, we would figure this out for you. She looked at me with like a blank face, like, like what? Like, like we didn't have that whole five minute conversation. It ticked me off so bad, y'all, because don't put me in a situation like that. Don't put any of us in a situation like that, you know, because for one, forget your feelings. I don't care anymore about how you want to fly and what window seat you want to be next to. Now, all I want to do is accommodate the lady that you're, you're messing over. You're messing over her situation now because she's standing in the middle of the aisle not knowing where she's supposed to go because you don't want to own up to that you're stealing her seat. Like, y'all, the, the pettiness of it all, the pettiness of it all, I just, I couldn't believe that she was doing that. Like, she would not open her mouth. She would not give us her boarding pass. And I told them, I told them all, oh, the whole plane heard me. I don't need to see her boarding pass. I know she's not supposed to be there. She's just looking at me, blank face. So, and literally y'all, the seat right in front of them. Old girl was in 20A, 19A was a window seat also. So all she would have had to do is move up one row. You know, but now you just want to act like a crazy person? So we were ready to go, you know. F1 said, no, we're not going to call AO. We're just going to put the lady that's being, you know, really patient as we try to figure out who the heck is in her seat because old girl don't want to get up. We put her in 19A. She was very nice about it. But y'all, that peeved me. Me and F3 were blowing steam about it for the rest of the day because it's just like, why be so disrespectful? It's not your assigned seat. I don't care what the AO or the gate agent told you, but on your boarding pass, you're sitting in the middle seat somewhere and that's where you should be. And if I tell you that I'm gonna accommodate you, then let me do that. Don't take it upon yourself to, to sit around and mess somebody else over. Like that's rude. A little petty me, I ignored her for the rest of the flight. She wasn't in my section, thank God, so I didn't have to offer her no snacks or drinks. But I didn't look her way not once. <laughs> I didn't look her way once because I didn't want to smile like I'm always walking through the aisle smiling and trying to be cheery and nice you know and then did I even tell y'all the TVs never came on the TVs were off the whole flight horrible but you know it's kind of good because they just slept but I didn't want to look her way I didn't want to smile I didn't want to do anything I just wanted to ignore her because it just it just she just she really irritated the heck out of me and F1 was like, no, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to have to kick the whole family off because you kick one off, then they probably all going to leave, right? We're going to Barbados. We don't have time for that. But <sighs> let me digress because I'm going to get all flustered about that. I could probably talk about it for another 20 minutes, but I'm going to digress, y'all. So for those of you that are not flight attendants and that just fly and like to watch these vlogs, sit in your seat. Sit in the seat that's on your boarding pass. That's all we ask. And if you need some adjustments, let the flight attendant know. And I'm sure that he or she will do whatever they can to accommodate you. But don't take it upon yourself to sit wherever you want and then act like you can't hear nor speak when we're talking to you. Shoot. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of this vlog, Vlogmas Day 11. 
I'm sleepy. We got one leg to Fort Lauderdale tomorrow. I'm so thankful for that because I'm on a two hour time difference from what I woke up this morning. We're two hours ahead of Chicago, one hour ahead of JFK. So that's gonna just, that, that wake up call is gonna just be early. It's gonna mess me over a little bit. One leg to Fort Lauderdale and then I can just, I can take a, a good nap because we have about a 18 hour layover there. So I'll be okay. So if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed these flight attendant pet peeves, my F1 and F3 did not want to show their faces in the vlog and I do have to respect that. Not everybody wants to be on YouTube. Uh, but if you enjoyed their inputs via voice, go ahead and give this vlog a thumbs up and go ahead and make sure you subscribe and go ahead and make sure you check out the giveaway video and enter for the giveaway as well. I will see you all tomorrow. Good night.